I'm Michael Krigsman, and we are here in Las Vegas at the Financial Force user event, which is called Community Live 2017. And I'm speaking with RJ Smith, who is the VP of Finance with Venture Technologies. Hey, RJ, how are you? I'm good. It's great to be with you. Tell us about Venture. So Venture is a technology reseller. We're a Cisco partner, and we focus on network solutions and cloud solutions um, in the government, education, and commercial space. So what are you doing with Financial Force? The primary interactions that I'm uh, placing a lot of value on here is, is being able to impact the product roadmap, to provide feedback to them about what matters most to our business, and then also getting training and collaborating with them on, on understanding what what we're doing as a business and how that can flow into future versions of the product. Those are the primary reasons why I'm here. RJ, you're the VP of Finance. How do you look at this service economy and how does this relate to your company? So our revenue models are completely changing within this environment. The customers are demanding solutions that blend tangible, intangible um, services and different technologies being provided to them in, in ways that, that we never imagined um, before. And so from my perspective in finance, this is really um, opening up new ways to make sure that we're responding to customer demands and to their requirements as their businesses change and evolve. And how about your margins? So our margins in the traditional hardware and software resale are thinner than they've ever been. But in our professional services and cloud and managed service spaces, we're, we're seeing increased margins because we're able to deploy solutions that are lower cost for our customers and also lower cost for us to deliver. Um, even at the same time, we're being able to provide hybrid solutions um, to our customers that, that simply wouldn't have been possible before. Some of that innovation is, is being driven by our manufacturer partners, those that are developing the software, and some of it, that innovation is occurring within our own team who are looking at solutions that, that may have been delivered a certain way for, for 10 or 15 years, and now we can deliver in a completely new way um, and, and solve problems for customers that they may not have even realized that they had. So you're innovating in your business in response to customer expectations of higher levels of service. That's right. At the same time, parts of your business have lower margins. Mm -hmm. So you're making investments and, and juggling efficiency, I'm assuming. And so how do you decide these investment decisions? So there's a prioritization that, that has to take place. I mean, we're, we're basically looking at our business holistically. We're spending a lot more time in the planning process than we did before. As, as a value-added reseller 15 years ago, you could plan and forecast based upon historical um, uh, data a lot more easily than you can today. Uh, today, you're having to, to do a lot more analysis and thought and, and planning around how you're going to deploy your own capital, how you're going to deploy the, the capital of your partners, how you're going to utilize your human capital and resources within the organization. So, so we're spending a lot more time in, in the really deep analytical parts of, of our business that we, that we didn't do before. So it sounds like data is the lifeblood and the, the, almost the, the driver, ultimately, of customer service. That's right. And that's where utilizing tools like Salesforce and Financial Force have been key to governing that planning and data analysis process for us. Which Financial Force products are you actually using? So we're using Financial Force Financial Management, Professional Services Automation, and um, their supply chain functionality, which helps us in our traditional hardware resale. And why did you choose them? Because of their close and tight integration being native on the Salesforce platform. We um, have been a longtime Salesforce customer for CRM and for customer interaction with um, the service cloud. Um, and so we were looking for um, a partner that, that was closely um, aligned with the Salesforce ecosystem and Financial Force met that requirement. So we now are collecting through the various uh, tools that we have on platform 
data about our customers that they may not even know about. And so having tool sets that we have uh, allow us to parse out and, and basically um, prioritize how we're going to respond to a customer's request, how we're going to propose and respond to opportunities that may exist within the marketplace. We're, we're basically able to, to use the tools as, as a much more reasonable um, framework to, to collect and organize the data that we're collecting about our customers. And so there is this direct linkage between that data and the interactions that you have with your customers. Our business today and our tool sets are, are now very customer driven and customer centric. We're, we're able to take a transaction that may hit the general ledger, which matters to me within the finance role, and drill all the way back to, to the interactions that our professional services team may have had relating to that transaction. We can take it even further back into the opportunity. So when we're doing our predictive analysis on, and forecasting on what our business is going to look like in the future, we have a very rich data set to draw from to be able to look at historical data. And, and, and that's been one of the most exciting and powerful things about utilizing these types of tools. It sounds like it's not just about the financial metrics, but it's about the customer satisfaction metrics equally as much. Yes, we're, we're basically able to, to look at and score uh, customer satisfaction at different points in the customer life cycle than we were able to do before. Um, and, and that has been um, particularly useful in, in being able to step in and intervene um, when a project may not be going as well as it should. Um, and it also gives us um, points to jump off of and be able to propose new solutions, new opportunities for revenue to generate for our business. So you have greater visibility or insight into what's actually happening with a project once it's underway. That's right. We, we have a much more um, developed understanding of our project process so, so even though as a Cisco partner, uh, we basically receive a, a lot of guidance as to how we should be delivering projects and, and, and that ecosystem is, is well established. But, but now we're able to do a lot more analysis within uh, the project delivery itself to be able to, to reach out and respond to, um, to changes and, and, and issues as they occur within uh, project delivery. Where do you see this all going? So the vision of where we can take it even further is being able to do much more rigorous analysis around um, our future forecasting. So today we've got all this data and we're able to do so much um, analysis on it. But a lot of times that's human analysis of the data. And, and so what we're looking forward to is being able to utilize tools like uh, Salesforce's uh, wave analytics to be able to do more predictive and prescriptive analysis, not only for our own use, but also for our customers. Because in, in the world of, of value-added resellers, um, what makes us distinctive is what we can provide versus any other reseller in the marketplace. And so we're really looking to leverage what we've developed to be able to offer new products and solutions to our customers that they can't receive anywhere else. Fantastic. RJ Smith, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.